Game number two of the Eastern Conference Finals tonight inside TD Garden between the Boston Celtics and the Indiana Pacers. Of course, game number one was an instant classic in Eastern Conference Finals playoff four. We got a double bang out of Mike Breen. That does not often happen. We had an overtime thriller in which Boston emerges and maybe even escapes with a 133-128 victory, although Indiana did cover as a 10-point road underdog. A total of 222 at close on FanDuel DRS, skied over, but even in regulation, even if Jalen Brown does not hit that game-tying three with six ticks remaining, 117-114 was over that number by nearly 10 points before we even got to the final 10 seconds. So we take all of that into our information for game number two. The Celtics now a nine-point home favorite in Beantown with a total of 225. Boston again, but a double-digit favorite in every single home game except for this one in the playoffs so far in the total up by three points from game number one at 225. DRS, what's your assessment on those changing numbers ahead of game two? Yeah, and it, it probably should be that way because the hardest game in the series for me, each and every series, is probably what? Game number one. We don't know what to anticipate. That's why we talked about heading in. I said I like the total and I like the Boston team total more than the game itself. Could I see Boston winning in a blowout in game number one? Yes. Could I see Indian Indiana? Getting close in game number one? Possibly. Could they cover the 10-point spread? Absolutely they did, and quite frankly, should have won that basketball game. Same thing we just talked about with Dallas and also Minnesota. I like Dallas coming in because I was sort of playing that, ooh, I wonder how that game seven is going to be, you know, taking the juice maybe out of the sales for Minnesota at home. And it did a little bit, and they won that basketball game. Game number two, yep. we saw these both two teams on the court. The general public right now is saying to themselves, Wait a second. I just watched a game where I got 10 points and Indiana should have won. You're going to try that trick with me again? I'm not going to fall for it. So most of the betting public siding with Indiana. But I'm on the opposite side because I want to draw back on the first two series where I talk about the Boston Celtics saying, oh, this team really wants to play basketball now, does it? And they didn't even escape with the mm. loss in game number one. They won that basketball game. So I look for a big performance out of the Boston Celtics in game number two. And also, the adjustment of the points is interesting. Because I'll tell you again, Ben, repeatedly, give me the overs early in the series, the unders a little yep. bit later. That's a big-time adjustment. Three or four points between one game and not any major, like, hey, Porzingis is coming back or Tatum's going to sit this one out, changes to the starting lineups. That's intriguing to me because 225 in a playoffs is still a decent amount to get to. So, so I'm not yeah. as in love with the total as I was in game number one, but I actually like the Celtics a little bit more. But if we're just talking about maybe – points props in that location i still think tatum gets into the 30s but if you're looking for a player from indiana i probably would focus a lot more on pascal siakam again in this game getting into the 20s which 21 points or more would cash in a ticket for him and we'll talk some props here in just a yeah. moment but donnie's point is very sound from the changes that we are seeing in these numbers 225 is a lofty total in NBA playoff basketball with a Celtics team that is much better on the defensive end of the floor than Indiana. Listen, the Pacers live up to their name. They play at a fast pace. They want to be up-tempo. They are the best offensive team throughout the regular season and now here in the postseason as well. Defense at times, not optional, but they're not great at that end of the floor. 225, though, is very very mm -hmm. large boston now nine playoff victories here in this postseason out of their 11 games game one of the ecf the only one decided by less than seven points seven of the nine still by 13 plus six of the nine boston has covered in this is the first game inside td garden out of the seven now to be eight tonight that we have seen for the Celtics in this postseason, they are not at least a double-digit favorite, and they've been a 13-plus point favorite in five of the previous seven. I'm laying the nine with the Celtics. And as Donnie has brought up a few times here as well, we all kind of bake in a Boston dud at some point in their series. Often it's been game two. They lost to Miami by double digits in their opening round series when the Heat shot a franchise best 23 made three pointers in that game. They lost by 24 to Cleveland in round number two as well. But they responded in those game threes, both on the road, winning by at least 13 points in covering as a lofty road favorite. Again, 
I thought this series would see Indiana win two games and make it a little bit more difficult than the odds makers expected for the Celtics. Somehow, some way, game number one has changed my mind. Not that Indiana's a better test than maybe we anticipated for the Celtics, but that was Indiana's best chance to make a statement in this series, and they coughed it up in the final 10 seconds of regulation. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't as if they, you know, the game was stolen from them. They just played so poorly in the final 10 seconds that they gave the basketball game away. Simple, hey, let's inbound the basketball, and if we do and catch the basketball, we win the basketball game. That's also tough, because I sometimes I talk about, Ben, forget about the X's and O's, the psyche of the team heading into this. Like, you are supposed to be heading to the arena tonight from an Indiana Pacers perspective with a 1-0 series lead. So I'm like, you know what? Let's handle the series right now and take this back 2-0. But you're heading into it like, man, we played one of our best basketball games and just handed it to the Celtics. We can't expect the Celtics to play that bad, let's just say, and us play that well and see what winds up in the end. The Celtics are probably going to end up winning this game and moving on 2-0. So the fact of that is, how do you anticipate this game setting up end in the first quarter alone? Is it the Celtics said, you got our attention, let's handle it, or the Pacers going, you know what? We know we should have won that basketball game. Let's win in the first right. quarter. So for my money here, if you look at the first half wager, the Pacers, if they're down 10 at the break, I don't know if they're coming back in this basketball game, but you know if the Pacers are up 10 at the break, there's no guarantee that they win and cover that basketball game. I do think you get a strong performance out of the Pacers, but if I'm betting it as a side, it's the Celtics for me. I'm going to fade the public, and I think you got the Celtics' attention, yeah. and I think they play much, much better in game number two here. Boston, a five-and-a-half point favorite for what it is worth in the opening half tonight of game number two against the Pacers. We will get into the props on the other side of the break, and we'll give you some best bets for this night in the NBA and elsewhere on this Thursday in the sports landscape. Jason Tatum has the highest points prop. It's 30-and-a-half. Jalen Brown has a higher number at 26 in a hook than anybody on Indiana as well. The Pacers have been incredibly balanced throughout the entirety of this season but really with a focus here in the playoffs as well. Seven players for the Pacers scoring in double figures in game number one. A prop outlook for game two of the ECF up next. The prop perspective for game number two inside TD Garden tonight of the Eastern Conference Finals. We start with the Celtics. Jason Tatum has scored 30-plus in three of the last four. In fact, more than just 30-plus over this prop of 30 and a hook in three of the last four games for Boston. Had not scored 30 in the postseason prior to these past four games. He has the highest points prop tonight of 30 and a half. Donnie, we talked about it earlier in the show. Mm -hmm. Because of overtime and just the high-scoring offensive affair of the opening game of the Eastern Conference Finals, pretty much wherever you look for the Celtics or the Pacers, if you wanted to bet a points prop to the over, you hit on Tuesday night. Where do you want to hit tonight with the props in the Eastern Conference Finals? Yeah, take a look for me, and I again, I look at, and they're starting to upgrade this, and that is you take a look at Al Horford's 10.5 points, 7.5 rebounds, 2.5 three-point shots, where I believe in game number one, was it 1.5, like a minus 140 or minus 145 price? They're hip to the game here, because now it's over 2.5, but it is a plus 148. I still think that gets here, because in a game where we're not playing all that much defense, and we're expecting 225 as points in game number one, even though when the overtime did go over the total, I look for Al Horford again, until we see Chris Tapps Porzingis back. If I'm getting 35 minutes out of a guy that's going to be left alone at the three-point line, I like my chances here. If you tell me right now that I'm going to get nine three-point shots or more out of Hal Forford, I'll take the over two and a half at a plus 148 price. But also, if like we it. take a look at Jason Tatum, I just think the sky is the limit for the kid, right? 30 points tonight, not great defense. If he gets off to one of his games where I get nine points in the first quarter, he's easily going over 30. So those are the two I like from a Celtics perspective. From an Indiana perspective, I just tipped my hand in the last segment. I like Pascal Siakam. Put it this way. Pascal Siakam doesn't get over 20 and a half points. It's a wrap, and this is a 15-plus point win for the Boston Celtics. 20-plus points for Pascal Siakam in four straight games. The final three yeah. against the New York Knicks, 24 in game number one. The Pacers had a ton of balance and have throughout this postseason run. Seven players in double figures, all five starters and OB Toppin and TJ McConnell off the bench for Indiana as well. So when you look at the Pacers, 
that's where you can really begin. Pascal Siakam, the highest points prop. Tyrese Halliburton, the team's leading scorer in game number one. Miles Turner, three made threes in game number one as well. His three-point prop here for game number two, as I track it down, is one and a half, and the over has the hefty juice at minus 122. If I was looking for some value on Indiana, this is what JY told us yesterday. Want to see where the prop is right now? Three and a half. The assist prop for Pascal Siakam. The under actually has more juice. The over only at minus 105. Pascal Siakam, seven dimes in game number one. 12 rebounds as well for Siakam. He also had at least four assists in the last two games of that series against New York. Can be a primary ball handler at times. A good look at that three and a half assist prop.